Hello guys. In the previous video, we looked at one-to-many relation in Prisma. Today, we're going to look at many-to-many -many relation. Before we start, let's go ahead and compare the two. Let's first take a look at one-to-many relation. So we have user stable and user may or may not have post. And it could be one or many or zero. That's why we have a bubble right here. Post, on the other hand, should always have a user. So if we put post in this table, we need to relate it to the user. And this is in a nutshell one-to-many relation. Now let's take a look at many-to-many -many relation. As you can see, many-to-many -many relation is essentially two one-to-many relations. To model one-to-many relation, we created a new table. This relation table is called a join, a link, or a pivot table. Creating relation tables is a common data modeling practice in SQL to represent relations between different entities. In our case, this table is called post tag and it contains two foreign keys. One is a post ID and the other one is tag ID. If a record exists in this table, then the post has tag and the tag has post. It is also a common practice to create a composite unique index on post ID and tag ID. So meaning if there is a post ID entry, there should be a tag ID entry as well. And also you cannot have two of the same post ID and tag ID entries. So we cannot have post ID one and tag one, and then again, post ID one and tag one. As you can see with many to many relation, complexity of managing many to many relation increases. And it would be nice if let's say Prisma could manage this complexity for us. You can configure many to many relation in Prisma in such a way that Prisma will manage this join table. And this many-to-many -many relation is called implicit many-to-many -many relation in Prisma. So let's go ahead and configure implicit many-to-many -many relation in Prisma. Let's go ahead and open Prisma schema. And we're going to add a tag model to it. Okay, let's go ahead and put model tag. We're going to have ID integer. It's going to be primary key and auto increment and the default. Then we're going to have name, which will be string and the unique. And then we have a relation posts and this field will be Prisma managed field. So we're not going to have this in the table and let's call our table tags. And as you can see, Prisma is complaining. It tells us that it cannot find the opposite relation on a post model. So let's go ahead and put the corresponding tags field on post model and the type will be an array of tag. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create a type tag in a types definition file. So right here under the posts in the file types that d.ts, we're going to have type tag equals, and we're going to put the same fields ID. It will be number. Our name will be a string. And then we're going to have posts. And it will be an optional and a type will be an array of posts. And in the same way, let's go to the post type and then we're going to define an optional relation it will be tags, right? So put tags, it is optional and the type will be an array of tag. Let's go ahead and save. So as you can see in the Prisma model, we just created this tag table and we never created the join table because Prisma will be managing that for us. So let's go ahead and create a migration. We're going to run LPM, run migration, create. And we're going to call our migration name equals create tags table. Let's hit enter. And the migration got created. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So in the migrations folder, we have this new migration. And as you can see, we have created table and it's called underscore post to tag. This is how Prisma names this join table by default when it creates it and it puts underscore. So it means it is Prisma managed and it's called post to tag and the fields or columns are called A and B instead of post ID and tag ID. Also, you can see that it created a unique index on both of the A and B columns, and it also gets an additional index on a B column. Besides indexes, Prisma create uh, two foreign key constraints. It's going to be post tag 
A for in key and post tag B for in key. And this is to ensure that when we have entries in a post to tag table, there are also corresponding entries in a post and a tag tables. As you can see, Prisma kind of named this join table for us. What if we want to name this table differently? We can definitely do that. Let's go ahead and actually then delete this migration. And then if we go to Prisma model, what we can do here is annotate the fields, tags and posts on post and a tag models. We can annotate it with a relation and we can now put the name of the table, this join table that we want to have. So we can call it post underscore tag. And then in the same way, we need to annotate the posts field on tag model. So let's put relation and we'll put the same thing, post underscore tag. Now let's go ahead and rerun migration create script. And the migration got created again. So if we take a look at this, we're going to see that now our table is called post underscore tag, and we still have underscore right here. So we know that Prisma is going to be managing this table. Now let's go ahead and see how we can populate this relation. So in a cedar.mjs file, right, we have right over here, we are creating user, and then we are also creating posts. So under the published, property inside the create property, we can actually put right here another property and we call it tags, right? And then for this posts, right, we're going to create a two tags. Uh, and we'll just put faker lorm word, and then Prisma will connect these tags and post for us. Also, when creating tags, and connecting it to the post, we don't have to necessarily create them all the time when we see it, right? We can also create or connect. So let's go to the posts on the second user. In the post create array, we can add property tags, which is an object containing connect or create array. In that array, we place objects that connect or create already predefined tags. And let's go ahead and fix the typo right here. And now we can save the seed.mjs file. Now let's go ahead and open the terminal. And first we're going to be running npm run migrate, right? Because we haven't run our create text table migration. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's go ahead and run npm run seed. Let's run it one more time. So we have more entries in the database. Now we need to be able to fetch the tags for the posts, right? And in order to do that, we're going to go into SRC folder repositories and we have the post repository. Here you can see we're including author and we also can include tags and we'll put true as well. Besides getting tags for posts, we also should be able to get posts for tags, right? And for that, let's go ahead and create another repository. We're going to call it a tags repository that's yes, right? And uh, let's put the following code in there. As you can see, we're using the base repository and our repository is tag repository, extends base repository, and, you know, constructor uses constructor super Prisma. And now we're going to be using tag model. And then we're going to have get by ID method, right? Where we are getting tag by ID, and then we're including posts on it. So let's go ahead and use this repositories in the pages, right? Let's go to the app folder. First, we're going to go to the posts folder and uh, the post by ID page right over here. We are going to add the tags, right? So let's go ahead and uh, scroll down right before closing the div tag. We're going to add the following code. We're going to again create a little margin here. And then we're going to have tags and we will fetch the post, right? With all these tags. All right. And then we're also going to add a link. So when we click on this tag, we're going to go to a tag single page, and then we're going to see what posts are associated with a specific tag. Let's also go ahead and import the link right here. So now our file looks good. Let's go ahead and save it. 
Now let's go ahead and create a single tag page. So in the app folder, we're going to create another folder. We're going to call it tags. And in this folder, we're going to create folder ID. It's going to be a dynamic route. And then in the ID folder, we're going to create a new file and we'll call it page.csx. And in this page, we're going to put the following code. Looks like VS Code is complaining about this code. Yeah, because we made a little mistake. Let's go ahead and rename this page to page.csx. All right, and now it looks good. So we're going to import tag repository and then going to import link, right, to have a link back to our posts. This page will be a dynamic page and we're going to get data in the, in the same way that we are getting data from post, for example, repository, we'll get a uh, tag from tags repository, and then we're going to return tag and we're going to be getting this tag by ID. So next we're going to export the function post page. We're going to get this tag from the get data. We'll have header right here, post tagged with, right? And we're going to put the tag name and then we're going to go through posts on this tag, right? Because in a tag repository, we included these posts. And we're going to go ahead and look through that map and basically uh, put kind of the same way where we had a list post page, right? We're going to put the title, we're going to put created on, put the to local date string, and then there will be a link so we can click on the post and it will lead us to the post page. However, if obviously there is no posts because the post is really optional, right, on the tags, so we're going to show the message that there are no posts. Now let's go ahead and test our code, see what we got there. So let's go ahead and run npm run dev. And in the browser, let's go to localhost 3000 and we can see our next JS app right here. I also added this posts link so we can jump to posts right away. And you see, we can have posts that we created using uh, Cedar, right? Let's go click on one of these posts. And we can see this post by Sadie King, right? And we have two tags. So we can jump and click on one of the tags. And we can see that this tag has two posts. So we can click back on the post and see, you know, what post we have. Same thing in this other tag, right? We can click on the post and it will lead us to the post. So it seems like the code is working. So far, we have a single many to many implicit relation, but with Prisma, you can actually have a multiple many to many relation, right? Let's go ahead and see how to do that real quick. Not going to run any migrations. It's just going to be a quick example that they have in the documentation. So in order to have multiple many to many relation, you have to uh, define a different annotation, right? So right here, we're going to have a model user and then you're going to have the fields video user disliked videos and videos user liked videos, right? And you annotate them differently. So you're going to have now two join tables and the same way on the video model, you're going to have user user disliked videos and user user liked videos. Again, the annotations are kind of the same, right? When you're going to run this migration, as I mentioned before, you're going to have a two joint or pivot tables, right? Let's take a look at how this is going to look like. So let's jump real quickly in a migration file here and we're going to paste it like this. So we're going to create the table if does not exist video, right? Create a table if does not exist user. And as I mentioned in the multiple many to many relation, right? You're going to have two join tables, right? User liked videos, same thing, right? You're going to have the foreign keys on them user dislike foreign videos, right? Again, foreign key. And then you're going to be creating unique indexes on the composite columns and then another index. So you can reference the second field. And the best part is that Prisma manages these uh, two join tables and your multiple many to many relation. So as a rule of thumb, use implicit many to many relations, whether it is a single or multiple many to many. With implicit relation, however, in the join table, you only have two fields, but sometimes you'll need to store more than that. For example, you may want to store the date and relation was created. So in this case, you need to use explicit many to many relation instead of implicit one. So to see how to do that, please check out this video. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.